Good morning, my YouTube friends and family. Hope everyone's doing well. I snuck back out to the car this morning to do a little more work on videos. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where my son's still asleep. He sleeps in my bed. He's 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 gotten real attached to me. I mean, I've been home almost two weeks now, and uh, it's it's the most I've been home here in in, in a little bit. Even when oil field was going. Um, you know, I was home a week, gone a week, home a week, gone a week. And um, since oil field died and we went over the road, um, I've been I've been gone a lot more. That's the God honest truth. And um, I'm hoping here over the next couple of weeks to put more trucks over the road where I could be home a little more. Um, you know, right now I'm just trying to hit like that that critical mass of, of how much revenue we need just just to cover expenses, right? But uh, with more trucks on the road, I, I don't have to work as much. Um, and I'm hoping here over the next few weeks to get a few more going. Anyways, um, I'm in the wife's car today because the, the F-150 doesn't really have a good place to mount a camera. And so I end up holding it and it's moving and it, it kind of makes the video not as good. Um, anyway, so I, um, I'm going to see if I can quiet down the... Um, the AC a little bit here just to um, make the video a little better I'm not sure if you guys were picking up the, the blower fan or not anyway so I wanted to touch on some some issues that kind of come up with people that are trying to get into Amazon uh, I understand that you know I get a lot of subscribers because you guys are interested in getting into Amazon and you want to hear what I have to say and you want to see what the load boards are and, and you're smart to do so. Um, I'm not saying that just because you're watching my videos. Uh, what I'm try <clears throat> trying to say here is you're smart to research what kind of work is out there for you. Excuse me, because I'm gonna start coughing if I don't have a drink of coffee here. And so when I got onto Amazon, I didn't know what the rates were. I had a friend that told me you know, he had teams running for Amazon and he was making really good money a couple years ago and then all of a sudden it kind of went in the toilet and he pulled his trucks out. He had three of them and, you know, these tours that are paying 9000 back in the day, they were paying three to 15000 and, you know, according to him, he was getting 280 to three and change a mile and and doing you know these these five and six thousand mile tours so it was good money and you know things started to change um amazon's algorithm kind of became such that if you're dumb enough to accept it at a cheaper price they're going to put it out at a cheaper price and, and that's still the 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 point today right as i go through my videos you guys see that and so I jumped in, um, frankly, because I, I had nothing else, guys. Uh, in the Permian Basin, if you're familiar, that area between, if you draw like, like a triangle between El Paso, Texas, Carlsbad, New Mexico, and down to Odessa, Midland area, Texas, if you draw a triangle, that's, that's kind of where, where our work was. There's nothing else there, guys. Um, literally, there's, there's, there's not another industry there uh, the mines don't use my type of truck um, in previous years when oil field dropped uh, we would drop our tanks and do power only and pull the big stainless steel milk um, milk trailers and um, those paid okay um, it was it was from going from dairies there in the New Mexico area out to Dallas and back um, the runs were a little hard because you know you you needed big horsepower to make them make them on time and so if you didn't have if you didn't have the ponies to to move that load down the highway doing 75 uh, you struggled to get it there and, and the loads were overnight they didn't want you hauling you know raw milk in broad daylight where the Sun would beat on that stainless steel tank um, they wanted you to roll that at night and, and get it there the same night anyway so when I first opened up the Amazon load board, I was kind of disgusted. Um, the rates, no different than what I'm showing you guys here. 
um, were really bad. And, you know, I honestly had thought to myself, what a waste of money to add, you know, trailer interchange. And I had to change my cargo policy um, because my existing cargo was geared towards oil field. Um, no one really wants to steal an oily, dirty drill bit, even though they're they're worth a quarter million dollars. Um, people don't really try to steal them. Um, the the theft occurrence is very low. Um, no one really wants to steal steal you know um, BOPs or pipe. You know, no one wants to steal forty foot sections of of drill pipe. So cargo insurance was very cheap. Um, when I told them I wanted to do Amazon. They said flat out no. I had to get a different policy. Um, you know that included electronics. That that was the whole thing. The the my old cargo insurance did not include electronic devices. You know iPhones, tablets, TVs, that kind of thing. So I was disgusted with it. And you guys are smart to watch my videos and try and figure out what's the market really like. I want to point out kind of how their system works. I know some of you guys are thinking, I'm gonna buy a box truck, it's cheap to get in, and I'm gonna build a business off a box truck because I see these other guys' YouTube videos and you know they're doing really well with box truck. So you have to remember what brought the box truck market to life with Amazon. There wasn't a big box truck market with them just a couple years ago. Back in late 2018, um, Amazon was using UPS primarily and FedEx to do what Amazon calls their last mile delivery. And if you guys remember, you know, used to be you would you would click on that Prime account and it would say, you know, click here now and, you know, have it by, you know, Monday morning and you're like, "Man, how can they get it here Monday morning? It's Saturday." And, and that was really, you know, in my opinion, what put Amazon, not on the map, but what put them over the top over every other um, online vendor or, or e-commerce company. Um, honestly, when, when I buy from someone other than Amazon now, I buy a truck part, you know, I click, you know, yeah, ship it, blah, blah, blah. And a week later, I don't have it, and I'm frustrated. Hey, what happened? What's going on? I call them up, and they're like, well, um, sir, you ordered that on Saturday. Um, it shipped Monday afternoon when UPS came by to pick it up, and it's going ground. You should have it next Monday. And I'm like, really? A week? Um, we've been spoiled by Amazon, right? But it's, what's, it's what really has been Amazon's biggest marketing tool, the Prime. In fact, Jeff Bezos was once interviewed and his his comment was on our books that every day, day in and day out operation is not very profitable. Our profit comes from Amazon Prime members renewing their membership. That's where their money comes from. Um, and, and those were his words. Um, I, I read an article on it. I'm the kind of person that likes to read as much as I can when, when I'm going to maybe not put all my eggs in one basket, but when I'm gonna put my eggs in a basket, I like to read um, and, and find out, you know, what their what their backstory is, what what are other people saying about them. When I was doing oil field, same thing, you know, when, when I got on with, with Marathon Oil, um, you know, some of you guys probably know who they are, they're, they're, they're a relatively large company. I, I read a lot of articles on them first. Um, same thing with Chevron. I mean, I knew who Chevron was, they, they have, fueling stations all over the country, but I like to read. And um, I, I have kind of an analytical mind. I, I like to analyze stuff. So uh, let me try and get up back on topic here, I, my apologies. So one of the first things you guys need to understand is everything we see in the relay board is work that was not handled or could not be covered by their long-term contracts, okay? People, are always asking, hey, don't you need three trucks to get on with Amazon? That was before. That was when they had their old program. So what would happen is a carrier like myself would go to them and say, you know, I have more than three trucks. You know, I would provide them a certificate of insurance that listed all the power units. And that was kind of confirmation that yes, you do have, you know, whatever you're claiming. In our case, you know, we were running 20 trucks a couple years ago. 
um, and we could have proven, hey, we have 20 trucks. And so at that point, they would um, let us bid on routes that were close to our our origin place. Um, they call it your, your domicile. And so you would bid on some of those routes and based on your price point, you would be allowed to look at loads uh, kind of in a priority based on your, your price point. And so that was a separate load board. And that load board um, does not get covered. It, it, it can't cover all the work. So if I get, for example, a power only load coming out of a specific location, they're building one in El Paso right now. So let's just say I got um, three routes and each route requires two trucks per day. So that's six trucks I gotta keep rotating, which kinda means you need 10 trucks in your fleet to adequately service it because, you know, downtime, you know, rotating schedules, yada, yada, yada. So when they have more work than my routes can cover, um, what they do is they put it on the, the relay board. And that's where, you know, the rest of us, uh, I never got one of those contracts, but that's where the rest of us see these, these loads. And if I started doing those loads and was doing them really well out of the El Paso place and they're growing and they need to add another carrier to, to provide a contract load, what they'll do is they'll, they'll run a report and see which carrier has the best score that does the most loads out of that location that manager will then tell their supply chain manager, you know, hey, I have I have a need for three more dedicated trucks. And this is, you know, who is always Johnny on the spot. They always, you know, their their score is good. You know, they've never had a, a disruption for us. And, you know, we should consider these people. And so that's when you get the email and you get invited to bid on the route, yada, yada, yada. But the rest of us, we're stuck with relay. And, and that includes box trucks, power only, and like what I do where I provide my own trailer. So that's where I learned um, if you let the load sit and you book it six hours before it's due time to, to get picked up, the rate goes up. Uh, sometimes as much as 50% and you know for myself I was plenty happy hauling stuff even though I live in California um, my best loads honestly were between Dallas and Memphis uh, it's about 500 miles and on average we were doing 1500 bucks on those loads on the high side it was 1800 on the low side it was 1200 the 1200 loads typically went from Dallas to Memphis but the loads for some reason coming out of Memphis were always better. From Memphis back to Dallas was good. Um, from Memphis up into Kansas was good. Um, even from Memphis to, to um, Nashville was good. But then when they came out with these short-term contracts, really cheap, they moved a lot of their loads into those contracts and my loads went away and that's when I left Amazon and looked for greener pastures. So Amazon, for the sake of making more profit will change what we think is our bread and butter. And the guys that are looking to get into the box trucks need to consider that, you know, at the, at the beginning of my video, sorry, I went in this big old circle, but I'm, I'm trying to give everything a little credibility by explaining it. So back in 18, um, you know, they were using primarily as their, as their first source was UPS. And I, and I believe it's because they were cheaper. And then their backup was UPS. And then lastly came the Postal Service, USPS, right? And so um, one by one, um, the, the contracts didn't get renewed, whether it was, you know, I read a couple different articles and depending on whose article you read, you know, uh, if you read the article for uh, FedEx, you know, FedEx said it wasn't profitable and so they raised their rate and Amazon didn't agree. Um, you know, the US Postal Service, Amazon said, you know, that that US, uh, that UPS wasn't willing to negotiate. I, I didn't read an article to see what the, you know, U UPS had to say on their behalf, but ultimately it boiled down to money. 
Um, neither neither major carrier was happy with, you know, I'm sure they love the volume because Amazon moves a ton of freight. But ultimately what Amazon did is that that's when they initiated their their last mile program. And if you guys, you know, search through YouTube, you know, you'll you'll see these contracts. You come up with like ten thousand dollars in cash and they'll lease you a fleet of these vans that they used to deliver with. You hire the employees, you work your butt off, you take all the exposure and, you know, they provide you the vans. So from their marketing standpoint, hey, it's an Amazon van that came out here. But of course, from the money you're generating, they're taking those those lease payments for the vans back out. And that's their goal, guys, is to use those vans everywhere. Those vans get their packages from a fulfillment center. And so those of you guys that are that are doing the box truck that think, you know, I'm gonna jump into Amazon and I'm gonna I'm gonna grow this thing to 20 trucks and, and this is my, my retirement plan, understand that Amazon's goal is to not use box vans. Amazon's goal is to eventually have the little gray vans with the big smiley face on it all over the country. And they're not gonna use box vans forever. In fact, I believe if, you know, the, the Postal Service cannot do what UPS and FedEx were doing. Um, you can't expect the Postal Service to send a semi-truck to a fulfillment center and distribute on their own um, all of these packages. Uh, the Postal Service just is not that efficient. In fact, you know, like every other year, you hear that, that the Postal Service lost a billion dollars, and so they're gonna raise your stamp another 10 cents because they, they can't manage themselves. They're, they're, they're a typical government agency that can't make money um, like any other. I mean, go stand in line at, at the DMV and, and see for yourself. So the minute one of these two major carriers decides, hey, you know what, UP or uh, Amazon may not have been the best money maker, but we kind of need that volume to make the money we want. The minute they go sit down at, at that bargaining table again and strike a deal, you know, we're, our box trucks are gonna be parked. That's, that's just the reality. And as Amazon grows their their fleet of trucks, the, the vans, um, they're gonna little by little eliminate the box truck necessity. Um, as it stands, uh, the markets that have a lot of them, they've, they've issued contracts to some, and, and I, I spoke with someone that hauls out of the Phoenix area, and he told me he has five trucks that run six days a week, and you know it's good work, it's decent pay, and he says, yeah, Miguel, the reason you know your your viewers you know are wondering about phoenix and and why you only sometimes see one van or you know not van but yeah one one box truck um the reason you see so few is there's myself and like three other contractors that have contracts and we're busy every day and if you got viewers that are looking to you know buy a truck you know they're going to get the scraps that we can't handle um, and, and, you know, he says, I've, I've seen your videos. Our rates are a little bit better than that. They're, they're not that cheap. Um, but your viewers are not going to get my loads or the other two companies that are in here. Um, they're just not, we're, we're under contract. And unless we do something to lose it, um, that's the way it is. We're, we're kind of locked in. And so in the Phoenix market, as Amazon develops its, its program where they're partnering with carriers to to buy these vans or, or lease them um you know maybe i'll try and find a video where where people kind of describe what this program is as that program grows there's going to be less and less a need for drive or for not for dry vans for for box trucks and i know a lot of you guys are interested because it's it's a cheap buy-in um you know, if you get one that's got a 26,000 pound gross vehicle weight rating, you do not need a CDL. Um, so it's it's easy to put drivers in it. It's easy to insure. It's easy to get your authority. Um, 
and, and I get it, people wanna jump in because it, it seems like a cash cow, understand that you need to use that as a stepping stone if you're in a market that's worthwhile, um, which for example, I don't believe the Phoenix market is, I don't believe the Los Angeles market is, they, they have a handful of loads that come up, most of them from LA are going to Vegas, um, and then the other ones that are considered LA market are out of Bakersfield, and they typically go also to Vegas, um, they come into Ventura County, um, a couple go north into Fresno, but you you need to live in Bakersfield for that to be worth your while. And so if you're if you live in the Inland Empire, um, you know for those of you that aren't familiar, Inland Empire is like east of Los Angeles but before you hit the the desert and and you're out towards Palm Springs. Inland Empire Inland Empire is out there in the Fontana San Bernardino area. Anyway, so I kind of just wanted to throw that out there, guys. Um, the the box truck thing in my opinion is a short term boom um i've got my teeth kicked in in the oil field uh, boom and bust um you know i keep getting calls right now from from clients and and even some of my competitors hey man you know you got trucks i i got i got an order for for 10 trucks by day 10 trucks by night and I only have six, I, I'd, I'd subcontract you, can you provide them for me? It, the fundamentals for oil aren't there, even though the price of fuel is, is skyrocketing, um, I, think by, I think this push will be slow by the end of the year. And I'm not gonna dump a bunch of money into that. In fact, um, I mentioned in another video, um, I'm in the paperwork process of getting a PPP loan and uh, I'm gonna use my my 60% for payroll, and that payroll is gonna include bringing a couple mechanics back on, um, bringing a couple drivers on, even if I don't have the trucks ready for them, I'll have them come into the yard and start detailing them out, you know, clean out the insides, you know, pressure wash them, get them, get them ready for the road and, and put some more trucks on the road. That's, that's my goal. Um, I, I still have an army of, of power units sitting in my yard and uh, I'm gonna put some together and, and get them over the road. And maybe 2022, if oil fundamentals are better, you know, I, I still have relationships and, and friendships and, and contracts. Um, I just need to renew my insurance and then I might consider it. But um, honestly, for for oil to, to peak my interest, it needs to be over 80 bucks a barrel. Um, this thing where where it, it peaks for a couple days and it drops back down into the 60s, not interested. Um, you know, the going rate for a lot of trucks right now, you know, they're doing between 55 and 65 an hour, not interested. If I can't get 85 to 95, just not gonna do it. Um, I, I, you know, I've gotten my teeth kicked in too much for, with, with the boom and bust, and I think for you guys doing box trucks, um, you're gonna need to be ready for your market to shift on you. If, if you're hauling out of, out of a specific area, as Amazon expands their their network of, you know, the little gray vans, or their independent contractors that get paid 20 bucks an hour to deliver out of their own vehicle, um, as Amazon expands those programs, they're not gonna need box trucks, guys. What they use box trucks for, you need to, you need to understand where your work comes from. You know, when I was in oil field, I understood exactly what created my work you know when they drill they needed fluids to drill whether it's oil-based mud whether it's brine water whether it's kcl fresh water when they drill they need truckloads and truckloads and truckloads of water when they drill in an area that has very porous rock and they lose circulation um they need an army of trucks to haul water by an army of trucks literally we're talking like a hundred trucks to run around the clock and so boom time right likewise when they frack you know they it's not so much they need water to the frack projects because typically they get big pumps that move more water than a hundred trucks can move you know a hundred trucks can't in a whole day move what these pumps will move in an hour and so fracking directly doesn't give us work but when they finish the fracking all of the water that comes back out what they call the the, the flow back that needs trucks and you know sometimes 20 trucks for a month around the clock. So I understood where my work came from. 
And I know all too well when that process slows, my work's gonna slow. Likewise, you guys need to study, you know, when Amazon decides, or if let's just say they decide to go back to a contract with UPS, FedEx, or they, they continually expand their in-house delivery program, you need to understand that part of what's gonna go away there is the box truck. And that's, that's the nature of you losing your work. Um, likewise, myself, you know, when, when I did work for Amazon and I provided my own trailer, I understood I'm bringing, I'm bringing product from vendors to Amazon into Amazon fulfillment centers. And that also has its peaks and valleys. And, you know, I, I understand that, you know, when Amazon strikes a deal with a larger carrier than myself, such as JB Hunt, you know, they're gonna package a lot of these loads in together and, you know, my work goes away. I noticed a big impact when, when last October, Amazon started doing these short-term contracts and guys were taking them for 600 bucks a day. Um, you know, I was making on average 1500 bucks a day. So why would I work for a third of the revenue that I was making? That's, that's when I switched over to my dispatch service and, um, you know, they, they get me a much better average, you know, not every day is better than the 1500 bucks. But if I have a $2,500 day and tomorrow's a thousand dollar day, my average is still good. Uh, my average is still where I want it to be, right? And so studying the bigger picture at Amazon is very important for you guys. Um, I know even though I'm, I'm posting up these, these load amounts and, and they're ridiculously low, you know, it, it's funny because, you know, I read the comments, not just on, on my YouTube channel, but on, on other social media and I'll post everything bad. I, there was one comment in particular, you know, I posted like, you're gonna drive 300 miles and you're gonna get 300 bucks and now you, you gotta come back empty. And someone posted posted on, on the comments, you know, okay, so that's the cons, what are the pros? You know, the, the con is you're losing your butt, you know, and, and, and I was gonna use the worst phrase there, but you guys know what I mean. You know, you're, you're, you're losing, um, you don't, the pros make, make no, no difference. Um, you could, I don't know, think, think this is a great deal because the, the chick that does your paperwork is cute and she smiles at you. That's a pro, but it doesn't pay the bills. Um, and if you're losing, you know, your tail on these deals, all the pros in the world don't add up to, you know, making the ends meet when, when your bank account goes negative because you're burning more in fuel and payroll than what you're making in actual revenue, right? And so I think it's important you guys understand how Amazon utilizes our services, why they utilize our services, and how they systematically are working to move us out. I'm sure all of you have seen, you know, the fleet of Amazon day cabs they have. Um, I passed a dealership in Phoenix, and there must have been a hundred of these power units sitting there. And then I passed a Kenworth dealership, I want to say in Idaho, and they had like another 50 sitting there. Um, I went to another facility that was under construction. Um, I want to say it was MEM6 in Memphis, and they had 40 brand new units sitting there. And so Amazon is continually growing their fleet where they need less and less carriers to do the short hauls. Um, and so the intermediate hauls, you know, your 500 mile stuff, uh, they're putting those on your solo two contracts, which if you look at most, most blocks they're offering guys, most of the blocks are solo twos. And I believe they don't require as many solo ones because they are using their own trucks more. This is Amazon's, you know, evolution. They're, they're evolving and it's, it's creating less and less market for us. And we need to understand that there's nothing guaranteed there. Um, everything that's on the relay board is leftover work that, you know, that, that didn't get filled by a contract. 
And so the, the relay board fluctuates. Yes, there's good market times and there's bad market times. Um, I recommend to everyone that's thinking about getting their authority, buying a truck or doing whatever to get on with Amazon, have yourself a backup plan. Um, don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you're gonna do box trucks, one of the viewers posted up uh, uh, in the comments, there's a company that specializes in the expediter vans and box truck loads. Um, he was gonna get a live demo. Maybe if he's watching this, you know, he can post up in the comments how that went or, or, or what their what their program is about. I have the curiosity just to help spread the word, you know, to my viewers. Anyway, um, I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. I, I just kind of want for everyone to think about the long-term, you know, um, uh, a guy called Hauling Cash did a video just yesterday. He went live and he was asking all his viewers, what's your long-term game plan? You know, what's what's your what's your reason what's your purpose here why are you doing this are you buying one truck and it's going to be just a paycheck for you doesn't make any sense i mean if you're doing this you're doing this because you want to build a carrier right um and it was a really good point it was a really good um live stream video you know he was kind of putting it out there for his viewers you know guys why are you doing this now he's he's primarily a a, a hot shotter flatbed that type of work um but i watched I watch a lot of guys' videos because there's more than one way to skin a cat, and I like to hear other people's perspectives. Um, in fact, if any of my viewers, subscribers, you know, have their own channel and they post stuff on on trucking, um, you know, I, I always bring up trucking topics today. Um, I know Tony's a subscriber. I don't know how often he he gets to watch, but when he posts videos, I watch them not just because I like his content. Um, his videos are very high quality, very well edited, and, you know, no, it, it's not an offense, actually. I was going to say no offense, Tony. It's a compliment to Tony. I like his videos, and I watch his videos because I, I like how he puts them together. And so my apologies there. Um, I, had a, I had a driver checking in. Anyway, so, yeah, uh, trucking topic today. Um, I check out Tow Piglet. Um, Tommy Unfiltered. You know, he was one of my first subscribers. He posts videos on trucking stuff. I check his videos out also. Um, you know, I, I follow guys that are following me and I follow a few others. Um, I, I do like to check out other people's videos. Um, it it kind of helps me gauge what I'm doing. You know, <laughs> I, I, I think I tend to like paint the, 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 the more drab or, or dark picture of what we're doing, but um, I'm doing it so people don't get that idea that everything's hunky-dory and you know I, I really hate videos that you know hey guys look at me I bought this box truck and you know look at all my money and and you know the reality is they're they're not making money and they just don't know it yet um, but I was I was talking about hauling cash you know his his live stream here was specifically on you know what's your end game you know why are you doing this what what's your what's your long-term plan what's your long-term perspective you know are, are you planning on being in this 10 years and at the end of 10 years you have one truck you know and it's a good point you know why are you doing this we had the goal of building our fleet um, in the Permian Basin to like 50 trucks and then expand to another market and build that one up and then expand to another one and build that one up um, we actually did hit a point where we were operating 40 trucks in the Permian and we started looking at Oklahoma and South Texas. We actually did a couple of uh, exploratory runs, if you want to call them that, where we went out and just poked around, looked, see see who was there. Um, oddly enough, or, or I guess not oddly because it's, it's, it's common, um, a lot of the clients that we had in the Permian were also out you know in, in those areas um you know wpx um wpx chevron marathon and <coughs> i want to say kaiser francis were we're all in oklahoma and you know we're, we're already on their vendor list so it's just a matter of you know getting in there and and making the introduction and, and starting to pursue some work but anyways guys so the idea of behind this video and I know I made it really long and rambled on and went in circles um, you know study what creates your work 
study what's going to make your work go away and make sure your plan has alternatives. Um, you know, I'm really concerned about the guys jumping into box trucks because they think it's, it's like, they think it's an industry that's never going to go away. And I've seen several people post that, hey, well, I got my box truck. I, I got my authority active, which means they, they put the down payment on the insurance and they bought the truck and I can't find any loads. It's because they didn't research their market. They, they didn't realize there's no box truck market there. There is not a box truck market everywhere you look. Um, let me think about if I phrased that correctly. Um, a better way to put it is Amazon does not use box trucks at every facility. There could be a facility two miles from, from your home does not mean that facility uses box trucks. It just doesn't. Uh, and the easiest way to tell is look outside your window when your stuff's being delivered, when your package is coming, if the postal service is delivering, a box truck took that load to that post office. If it's a blue van with, with the smiley face on it or someone in their personal vehicle, Amazon is delivering that directly themselves and they are not using a box truck. They may use a box truck to ship away from that facility, which could be a good advantage for you in that, you know, they might utilize a box truck and send deliveries 200 miles away, but understand that usually the places they ship to don't have return freight. They ship to a lot of really small towns where there's no return freight. Uh, in a couple of my videos I demonstrated, very small towns, you're gonna come back empty, deadheading, and so if you're getting $1.70 a mile, and you go 100 miles, you're gonna come back empty 100 miles, so that $1.70 is not gonna be for 100 miles, it's gonna be for 200 miles. I keep trying to emphasize that, and you know, every video that I post that in, the first question in the comment is, hey, so do you think this is a good market for box truck? No, no, I wouldn't do $1.70 a mile and have to deadhead more than half the miles. And by that I mean, if the nearest facility where box trucks are needed is 30 miles away, I'm gonna run empty from my home to that facility. And then I go make a 100 mile delivery. So now I'm at 130 miles being paid for 100 miles. And then I come back home 100 miles. So now I drove 230 miles and I'm being paid 30 miles, I'm sorry, 100 miles. Does that make sense? That That's the part I keep trying to emphasize and at the end of every video where I try and make that point, people ask me, so do you recommend getting a box truck? No, I don't. <laughs> um, unless you're in a market that has box truck business. So let's just say for example, you pick up a load in Los Angeles and you haul that load to, I don't know, Santa Barbara. And let's just say there's a small shipper out there that ships box truck loads daily back down towards LA and you can get in there and negotiate yourself something. So you go up taking an Amazon load, you come back bringing that shipper's load, perfect. Then yes, absolutely. But the majority of the box truck loads where I click on the address where it's going and we look at the town where you're delivering. It's a small town with a single post office and you know the town looks like it's maybe you know 30 square miles. In other words, three miles wide by 10 miles long and there's nothing there. Um, that's, that's the key component to making truck money with box trucks. You have to find something to bring you home. That's, that's the key element. That's the part I don't see. If any of the viewers are doing box truck now and you guys have uh, uh, another avenue for freight or you guys, you know, have a market where you say, oh yeah, no, I, I go from, you know, from, you know, Montgomery, Alabama to let's just say uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And after I do my drop, you know, there's a shipper or I have a broker and he gets me loads back home. You know, it only happens once a week that I deadhead. The rest of the time, I'm not. Okay, I get it. 
you know, and if anyone can comment below that that's working or it's it's feasible, let me know because I just don't see it. Um, and and I think if you study why Amazon uses box trucks and how they're phasing them out, even as they're still adding some to new markets, you know, you need to understand that it's going to be an ever shifting market on you. And about the time you think things are good, I think it's going to change on you and not be good. That's that's just my perspective on this, and I kind of wanted to share, <clears throat> you know, even for for the dry vans, it's constantly shifting. You know, Amazon's constantly looking for ways to button things up into a bigger contract that's cheaper. That's why you see more of these blocks. These blocks are eliminating the short, you know, 10 and 20 mile loads that pay 30 bucks a mile, you know, 300 bucks to move something 10 miles. You know, if they can roll that into a block where they're gonna pay you, you know, 700 or 600 bucks for the day, what do you think they're gonna do? They're gonna make more blocks. And, and and this is this is part of the reason why I stopped hauling for Amazon. I make more money with brokered loads through my dispatch service. I make way more money, guys. Um, and, and I I keep trying to emphasize that. <laughs> but the 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 number one response, the number one comment I'm gonna get at the end of this video is, so do you recommend I get a box truck? <laughs> Anyways, have a good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to try and do a video next. Um, I, I got to get inside and make breakfast for the family. That, that's kind of my... I, I like making breakfast for the family. In fact, someone asked me to, to upload a, how I made my, my chorizo and egg uh, burritos. They, they want my recipe. Um, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to make that video or not, but someone actually asked for it, believe it or not. Anyways, I'm going to go make breakfast, and if I still get a little bit of time, I'll, I'll make another little load board review. I got a couple more requests. If I can get them done daily, the videos will stay a little shorter, and, and I think you guys will appreciate that more. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching.